Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video unboxing and first impressions of the Sprint ZTE WeGo. As the coloring and the presentation of the box suggests, this is a cell phone designed for kids, the intended demographic being 6 to 12 years old. So if you don't want to give your child the liberty of a full-blown smartphone, this could be something to consider. The street price is very cheap. This came out about a year and a half ago, and some of the services have been discontinued, uh, such as a proprietary website that you could have used back in the day, but you can still activate it on Sprint, and uh, the price on Amazon is currently under $15, which again is very low cost. Same thing on eBay. Now, the concept of the WeGo is similar to the Firefly phone, which we reviewed many years ago, in the sense that it doesn't have a T9 style D-pad, it doesn't have a QWERTY keyboard, so you can't actually call someone freely. Uh, as a parent, you can pre-program 20 numbers into the cell phone, and the kid has the ability to dial any of those pre-programmed uh, keys. In addition, other features include GPS tracking, so it's a GPS tracker. In addition, it has a panic mode, which is actually kind of useful. There's a cord that you can tug on firmly, and it will ring an alarm and hopefully notify people around you that you need help. Uh, this is actually a feature that I can see more than just kids uh, finding helpful, perhaps if you're a college student uh, working late on campus. So anyways, this is the packaging, pretty simple. This is a CDMA phone that operates on 3G bands and not 4G, since it doesn't really have any other fancy features. Uh, there is no camera, there's no Bluetooth, there's no Wi-Fi, so you can't really browse the web. Uh, just a very simple and straightforward interface. In the back here you have this uh, image of what the phone looks like and you also have a QR code you can scan to learn more. This has been printed with soy ink so it's eco-friendly and if we just open up the box here we have the phone right on top. So let's take a closer look at this in a second. Underneath this main compartment it seems like we have the charger. This is actually a really bizarrely shaped L, L charger. It's a simple US plug and with a full-size USB port, but uh, the shape is definitely interesting. There is a standard micro USB cable included that you can see here. It's used for charging and syncing information. And that's it for this particular compartment. On the other compartment here, we have access to a dock. Now this is actually a pretty neat accessory they threw in for free. It allows you to charge the phone just by popping it in on a stand or on a desk. And mechanically you can see how it operates where you can press down the prongs and then all of a sudden these contact pins will protrude outwards and reach the contact chargers on the phone. The back here simply takes a standard micro USB uh, uh, cable for the power to flow through. There's rubber feet on the bottom that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or a desk, and this is what it looks like when it's completely docked. Alright, so next we have some additional accessories. Looks like a strap that you can use to maybe hang the cell phone onto a backpack or something. There's also a lanyard cord that you can use to wear the cell phone like a necklace. Uh, and finally, this looks like a screwdriver of some, some kind that you can use to maybe remove the back cover. And finally, there's a lanyard strap that hooks onto, again, a backpack or to some kind of pocket. In here we have the battery, it looks like. So again, this is produced by Chinese OEM ZTE. And the battery capacity, it looks like isn't displayed on here. I would guess it's around 600 milliamp hours, judging by the, the relative size, but should last you for about you know, a week before you need to recharge it since this phone doesn't have any advanced connectivity options. So indeed, it's actually 900 milliamp hours, so decent size. And that's it, aside from a few pamphlets. Um, again, there are no advanced features on the WeGo, so there isn't even an MP3 player or a video player, so everything is very basic. Adjusting the lanyard, there is a get started guide from Sprint. It's documented in color and tells you how to remove the various ports and access everything. And finally, there's also a safety information guide. So a closer look at the hardware, let's peel off the protective film in the front. Design-wise, the ZTE WeGo really reminds me of some earlier LG phones, like the LG Chocolate. It's actually very small in size, it's pebble-like. It seems smaller than the photos would suggest. If I compare it next to kind of a standard MP3 player, MP4 player, you can see the dimensions are actually very similar. So it's closer to, you know, an, an older 
iPod Nano than it is to a modern day smartphone that has a massive display. We have access to the uh, earpiece on the top, there is the LCD display, uh, and there's also access to just a simple OK key or a home key, and it's made entirely out of polycarbonate plastic. This is a fairly durable phone. You can see that uh, I've peeled back the back cover here, but all of the ports, including the battery compartment, has been accented in rubber, so it's partially waterproof. I wouldn't submerge it in water for too long, but it should withstand rain as well as drops uh, and rugged use by kids uh, in the day-to-day. -day. These are the two contact pins for the wireless uh, kind of charging dock, and here we have access to a back key, there's a volume rocker, the top just ha houses the uh, alarm uh, trigger, which again you can pull on to activate the siren and then pop it back in. And then there's the loudspeaker on the back. There's a flap that covers up the micro USB port for charging. And that's essentially it. Let's pop in the battery and see if there's any juice. So the back cover seems to snap on pretty easily. There's an interesting little port that if you open up, you'll see it doesn't actually do anything. It's a dead port. Uh, maybe there's a future accessory, but I'm not really sure. So that's interesting that there's nothing underneath that cover but it feels reasonably well constructed and well made and uh, feels decent enough in the hand, I would say. Let's try to plug it into the dock and see if it will power on. All right, so there's just the charging indication and there's also an LED light on the top that will display uh, when it's being charged or new notifications are coming in. So it seems like a pretty typical sprint kind of boot up sequence. It's a multi-color LED, as you can see. And now we're in the main interface. Uh, it's found sprint, again, it's using 3G bands. The display is definitely low res by modern standards because you know we've been spoiled by AMOLED screens and OLED screens lately, but you can see how Viewing angles are decent, but uh, they're a little bit washed out when you look downwards at the display. But it's not a huge problem, and the most important thing is that it's bright enough so you can still see everything uh, you know that you would want to when looking at the phone. So very, very simple interface here. Almost reminds me again of a little bit of an LG feature phone back in the day that uh, you know seems to just be able to do very simple tasks with no real extras. Uh, it seems like the volume keys here also are used for navigating up and down through lists as opposed to the home key here, which uh, you can tap on to select OK. All right, so if we dive a little bit deeper into the menu, uh, just on a first impressions perspective, we can see that, uh, first of all, reception seems to be quite strong in the San Francisco region, which is important since, again, this is just a phone, you want that feature to be there. Tapping on the volume key is just in the main home screen allows you to access the menu where you can call someone that's been pre-programmed. You can go to messages and see text messages sent over. Uh, you can also send out uh, very simple messages. There's only replies uh, by the form of templates that ZT has given you, things like, I'm at a party, I'm at school, I'm on a bus, that they've pre-programmed. You can't actually type out your own messages, again, since there isn't a keyboard and since this is geared for younger kids. You can take a closer look at missed calls and redial. You can also go into settings, and if I tap on that, you can change things like sound, hearing aids, uh, if you want this on or off. There's also background colors that I can change. So here's a few that you can customize through for, I guess, various themes. So let's try and go into the next one. And one more. So it seems like it has quite a few options to play around for uh, if your kid wants to change that. There's also a vi uh, vibrate or silence, so there is going to be a vibration sensor in here if you don't want the alarm to chime in class or something. There's also, looks like a pedometer, that's kind of interesting, so you can turn this on or off and this will maybe tell you how many steps you've walked per day. That's an interesting sensor. And settings can also be programmed as well. So that's an extra feature I didn't expect, uh, in addition to having, again, a GPS chipset, which means if you sign up for the service through Sprint, you can also track your child's location in real time on a map through the proprietary website. Now, this part is a little bit fishy in the sense that uh, some users are saying it's no longer accessible since the service is down for the website. However, some are saying that they are continuing members or they've signed up through an alternate URL and were able to still have access to. To it. So I would uh, take you know, caution, but technically that is a feature built into the hardware.
And under admin controls, you can see that it's locked by password and you can see the password in the user manual. That's where you have the ability to change things like, uh, you know, entering new numbers that you program into the phone's uh, phone book, which again is limited to about 20 numbers. And you can also change things like settings, privacy, you know, how loud you want the siren to be, the GPS tracking, how many minutes you want a location update, things like that, uh, that you can set up only by parents and locked kids. But that's basically it. So again, very simple interface grid layout, there's nothing else going on. Uh, the keys feel fairly tactile and responsive, and uh, it seems like it's fairly well built as well to withstand the daily use by a younger child. Uh, but more importantly, I'm kind of surprised by how elegant it also looks. It's a lot smaller than I expected, which means it's portable, and the charging dock is, again, a very nice extra. Seems like actually a pretty stylish looking uh, mini phone. So there is a also a symbol for GPS that you can see if it's on it means it's found a location it's locked and it's able to send that signal over to the user by form of the service uh, if you had it completely activated. Um, otherwise the loudspeaker is on the back so you can access speakerphone mode and the siren for the alarm which is very loud by the way. Your piece is again on the top there. So I'll do a quick demo of the alarm next. I'm just going to warn again people with headphones that this is quite loud so you maybe turn down the volume but this is how loud it is in real time. So it actually gets louder and louder, you know, after a few seconds of nothing happening. Uh, it definitely rivals almost a fire alarm in terms of its decibel uh, produced by the speaker, which is, again, pretty impressive. I would say that it's actually not too easy to accidentally trigger in my basic testing, just because you do need to exert a certain amount of force to actually pull on this. So just by wearing this, you know, you know, on a backpack or something, or twiddling around with it using your finger, it doesn't accidentally get triggered too often. Uh, so seems all right as far as uh, that part is concerned. So undocking it, you can see again this is what it looks like from the sides and again the screen for the most part is visible even under moderate lighting so anyways guys that's just been a quick unboxing first impressions look at the sprint zte uh, we go definitely an interesting uh, cell phone for kids if you do want to get one for a younger child uh, minus the smartphone you know smart capabilities just to control what he or she does on their device this is something that is worth a closer look especially since the price is so cheap however do take note that in 2017 not all of the features might be completely functional and that's again why the street price is so low at the moment but anyways an interesting piece of hardware and kit you can check out more details soon in our article coming out but this has been our video thanks for watching here at os